Good day, gentlemen and ladies. Welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be looking at your ESSRT page number two, the bottom part. And we're going to be discussing the generalized nucleosynthesis in a massive star. So let's focus on that word there. Um, generalized nucleosynthesis. All right. This simply means the combination of nuclei to form uh, another nucleus. Uh, let's pick it back on the idea of star fusion that we learned uh, a couple of weeks ago. We say within a star, lighter element hydrogen are being fused to create heavier element helium. So we see here a uh, hydrogen atom here is being fused with another hydrogen atom here. And as a result of that fusion, uh, energy is released and then uh, the heavier element helium is produced and uh, electron is given off and that comes in form of light. So what happens in star basically is stars using their fuel, using the most abundant gas we have in the universe, hydrogen, and fusing that to create helium. So as a result, uh, hydrogen is one of the, or it is the most abundant uh, element, most abundant gas in the universe, seconded by helium, which means helium is the second most abundant uh, element. So stars take these hydrogen, which is their fuel, and fuse them to create the heat and the light and the heavier element um, that we receive from stars. Now, this reference table page number two at the bottom gives you a more simplified version of what goes on in a massive star. Now, emphasis on that, this is the nucleosynthesis in a massive star, not an average star. So let's see what's happening here. So what we see here is that uh, H, which is hydrogen, is being fused to create helium. So I want you to annotate that. H actually stands for hydrogen. All right. Uh, and then hydrogen is being fused to create a heavier element, which is helium, HE. So HE is helium. Don't forget to annotate this. Very important so you know what each of these later represents. And of course, it's going to help you when you get to chemistry. And then helium is fused to produce carbon. And then carbon is fused to produce oxygen. So that's what it all represents. So we see hydrogen to helium, and then helium to um, helium to carbon, and then carbon to oxygen. So all represents or stands for oxygen. Then oxygen is fused to silicon. All right. So that's what Si represents. And silicon is fused to produce iron, which is Fe. So take note of that. So I'm just going to write what those represent. Hydrogen is H, helium is He, carbon is C, oxygen is O, silicon is Si, and uh, iron is Fe. So you just find this part in your reference table to make sure you have those annotated. So what do we have here? We have here that in the first layer, hydrogen is being fused into helium. So you see that it takes the star about seven times 10 to the power of six years to fuse all this hydrogen into helium. So seven times 10 to the power of six is an equivalent of seven million. So you want to annotate that. So it's an equivalent of seven million. So that's seven with six zeros. All right, seven with six zeros. So 10 to the power of six represents six zeros. So uh, it takes an, a massive star about 7 million years to fuse all of its hydrogen into helium. Now, when it runs out of hydrogen, it goes to the helium that it has created over the last 7 million years. So it will go to the helium and start fusing the helium to produce a much heavier element, which is carbon. And that takes a total of 7 times 10 to the power of 5, and that will be an equivalent of 700,000. So 
7 times 10 to the power of 5, that is 5 zero, that is 700,000 years. And then when it runs out of helium, now the star is going to fuse carbon and fuse the carbon into oxygen. And that will take a total of 600 years. And then when it's out of carbon, now it's going to go to oxygen and fuse the oxygen to produce uh, silicon. And that will take six months. And then finally, um, when it runs out of oxygen, it's going to take the silicon and fuse that to produce iron. And that will take one day. And when it's out of silicon there's nothing else to do so that star is going to collapse and that would take one over four which is a quarter of a second for that to happen so the core collapsing that is the supernova which means the superstar has just died that's a supernova the ex violent explosion that they make so what's the takeaway here lighter elements are used as fewer first and are used to are fused to produce a heavier element and then when the lighter element is exhausted the star goes to the next lighter element and then keeps going trickling down down all the way to the core so we have hydrogen being the lightest element down to helium down to uh, carbon down to uh, oxygen and then um, silicon and then finally to iron so which means iron is the heaviest of uh, these elements that massive stars produce. All right, now this is the periodic table that you guys are gonna be introduced to in chemistry. We see the, here that oxygen, uh, hydrogen is the lightest element that stars um, uh, fuse to produce the next element in the periodic table, which is He helium, okay? And then the, when the star runs out of hydrogen, it goes to helium and then starts to fuse that helium into um, into carbon and the process continues. So basically, that is how all of the elements in the periodic table are created by fusing the lighter elements into heavier elements on and on and on all the way down to iron, which is um, Fe right there. Now, during the process of supernova, when the star finally um, explode the temperature and gravity increases so much that it allows for the creation of all the other elements which means all of these other elements we have in the periodic table are created during the supernova explosion okay so um that is how all the elements in the known universe uh were created by stars fusing the lighter elements into heavier elements and then those heavier elements into more heavier elements and more heavier elements on and on and on like that as you have right here in your earth science reference table page number two so let's draw some conclusion first stars carry out fusion fusing lighter elements into heavier elements and the, and the heavier elements into that heavier element all the way down to the core, creating several elements uh, that we know in the universe. Now, the supermassive star stops at iron, and then when it collapses during the supernova, that is where all of the elements uh, are created by those uh, heavier elements that were created to be fused to create all the other elements we have in the periodic table. So needless to say, hydrogen is the most um, upon that element uh known in the universe about 75 percent and then um helium which is the nest is the most abundant element as well it's about 25 percent as well and then all other ones um comes in between in terms of abundance and the star spent most of his life in the first stage of fusing the hydrogen into helium that is where the star spent most of its life, which is 7 million years, like we agreed uh, earlier on. So there's a time when the star is young, when the star is in its main sequence uh, stage, like we discussed before in the star circle. So you see that the star actually spent most of its time in that first layer, fusing the lightest element, hydrogen, into helium. That is where the star lives the longest. All the other ones 
the star leaves shortly and quickly through them and before the supernova. And that is a wrap for today's lesson. And uh, see you guys later.